two outs and two on. The Red Sox lead at 2 nothing in the seventh inning here at Fenway. It feels like an oxymoron to say that the unexpected will happen. Now the batter's Bucky Dent, the Yankee shortstop. He's fly to right and popped to short. Dent's 0 for 2. Game 163 can be seen as a best or worst case scenario for a team after playing 162 games in a 180 day window. This is another key situation for Bucky Dent. You and another team, though you went off in different paths, met at the end point in exactly the same spot. Deep to left, Yastrzemski will not get it, it's a home run! We live and die for elimination games in sports, and 163 is that. It's nine innings of elimination baseball. A three-run home run for Bucky Dent, the Yankees now lead. For 163, it's all hands on deck. It's very off-putting to think that you can play 162 and, and somehow end with a dead heat that requires an additional game. Hello, everyone. I'm John Miller with Joe Morgan, and welcome to our coverage of this tiebreaker game. Our 162 was like 163. Win and move on, lose and go home. If the Reds win, we fly to Cincinnati and we play 163rd game. I was either starting the 163rd game or I was going to start against Randy Johnson in game one. We end up beating the Brewers in Milwaukee, eight hour rain delay, get home late. It was a little nerve wracking to tell you the truth. It was all happening so fast, boom, next day, here we go. 55,000 walk-ups in, in Synergy Field in Cincinnati. The energy in that park was, was crazy. It might have been crazier than postseason atmosphere. So it's late, 54,000 plus, packed, and I think there was a little drinking going on. You could only imagine the stuff that was set. And it was enough to like want to pop them. And it actually helped me do this. What a wild scene it is here at Coors Field. The San Diego Padres had their chances to get it done over the weekend. They couldn't do it, but Bud Black has saved his best for last. 19 game winner, Jake Peavy. 2007, I feel like we had our best team that we ever had in San Diego and a chance to really shock the world. He's in line to be a triple crown winner as a pitcher. He is outstanding. It wasn't like a normal night game. It was it was halfway in between, maybe a five o'clock start or something. It's in the shadows, you know, it's just different. You're just thrown into this Game 7 atmosphere in Colorado with your hair on fire. The, the one good thing about the Metrodome is it did build a, a fan noise and excitement. A huge crowd here at the Metrodome. The magnitude of the game speaks for itself, but what was interesting experiencing it is the magnitude of every pitch. The game did not start well at all. Just sometimes the ball goes your way and sometimes it doesn't. I felt like early, it certainly didn't. Was it in the first inning that Gardo Alfonso homered? Center field. Back to the wall, it's gone! And the Mets have jumped ahead of Paris 2-0 after only two batters. It's 2-0 before I even stand on the hill. It kind of took the life out of the stadium a little bit. Everyone was excited and oh. So I do remember the first inning being a little bit uh, off, to say the least. Way outside. Once I kind of found the rhythm, the tempo, the pitch, the umpire, then I was good. I remember facing Al Leiter the first go around and was, I was like, uh-oh. You could tell he wanted to be there. There were a lot of ebbs and flows from elation, excitement, depression. Line drive into center field, that's in for a hit. And the Tigers have an early lead. I just remember that I had to do something positive, that I had to fight and let the team know that, look, I'm not giving up. So Peavy trying to jumpstart his Padres offense. I remember getting on base to start the third inning. I was on third base and Adrian Gonzalez hits a grand slam. At the wall, it's gone. And erases a three-run deficit with a grand slam. Boom, we have a different ball game. The separator for me, once I got rolling, was I had that big backdoor curveball. Strike three call. Everybody in the press box was tied up in knots, not knowing which way this game was going to go. High fly ball, track, wall, and gone! The only thing I can remember about that outing is not breaking, fighting, scratching, and clawing, but not break. Thinning Jake Peavy is gone after six and a third innings. Getting to the ninth inning, when you hear about athletes having been in the zone, locked in, it's true. He struck him out! The Reds just have to tip their hats to Al Leiter. No one would have hit him that night. No one would have hit Al Leiter. He was just... One of the best in the business that night. As the guy responsible for getting post-game sound from the winning clubhouse, I found myself literally going from clubhouse door to clubhouse door, seemingly with every half inning. 
Line drive, throw there, throw back to first, double play! The game's tied, 6-6 six to six in the ninth. This NL wildcard tiebreaker is headed for extra frames. The fans are so tense, they can hardly breathe. Caught out there, runner tags, here he comes, throw to the plate, on target, and in time! 10th, 11th, 12th, 13th. Hairston swinging away. That ball is up and that ball is gone. Hairston takes him out of the yard to give the Padres the lead. And they hit a two-run homer with Trevor Hoffman still in the bullpen ready to come in. Find me the win probability of that. Fernando Rodney pitching in his fourth inning of work for the Tigers. And a pitch bounce right side base hit. There'll be no play. The Twins have won the Central. The roof almost popped off the Metrodome. Trevor Hoffman's one of my dear buddies. He was the leader of that team. Around from second base comes Tulowitzki. He will tie the score at eight. To right field, tagging his holiday. The throw to the plate, he is safe. To watch him not get it done that night was heartbreaking. I'm sure he ever got the plate. The hand never got home plate. To go home on a controversial call, yeah, you feel like your, your guts have been ripped out. There was so much significance to this game. This is something we should try to have every year, and wouldn't you know it, now we have the wild card game. One game for everything. You're the only game that day. That means everybody in baseball and every fan that cares about baseball is watching your game. All the marbles are in at that point.